empty box that Tainari gave us since we already watched it. Oh, it smells amazing. And the box is a nice touch, too. Let's go serve this up and start eating with Hapasia. Jean will be upset if she catches us lazing around like this. Huh. Are you already finished cooking? Mmm, smells delectable. I'm truly thankful whenever I can enjoy a proper meal like this. Uh, cooking really isn't my forte. Even though everything you mentioned was in Tainari's letter, it's still hard to believe you were able to connect with Ermin's soul immediately after smelling spirit borne eel for the first time. It took me nearly three years before I could do so. And everyone at the Academia even lauded me as a genius. You should know that some researchers spent their entire lives without ever successfully connecting with Ermin's soul as you have. So why does Incense allow people to connect to Erminsul. The ingredients used to make spirit borneo primarily consist of plants created by Greater Lord Ruka Devata. These special ingredients are conducive to heightening our senses to the Dendro Archon's power. Since the root of the Dendro Archon's power lies within Erminsul, we can occasionally tap into her powers to peer into the depths of the earth. Naturally, Anyone who can establish a connection with Ermisol in their first ever attempt must be a person of great understanding. Hmm. Makes sense. But Paimon's got a question. Why was she sensitive to the smell of those plants for such a long time? That was primarily due to her body's unique constitution. Stimulated by the incense, she could perceive the Dendro Archon's power and experience the sensory overload. Hence, the adverse reactions. Taking in any scent similar to the ingredients of spirit borne ale would cause adverse effects. Not to worry, though. It appears you've already fully recovered. Technically, your body should still be sensitive to the powers of the Dendro Archon. But unless you're using intentional meditation techniques, the scent of spirit borne ale should no longer trigger such reactions. Whew. Well, that's a relief. I must admit, I am quite envious of your abilities. Even if it meant suffering from pounding headaches for the rest of my life, I'd consider it worthwhile so long as I could connect with Ermansoul at will. Whoa! You're really serious about this whole thing, aren't you? <laughs> I am a researcher, after all. As a member of the Ritawes Darshan at the Academia, my main area of research is the stars and their connection to the fate of living beings. But there is still so much we don't know, especially regarding the mysteries that lie in the starry skies. Which is why I must turn to the all-knowing Ermansoul for answers. If only my perception wasn't so limited. Unfortunately, I cannot guarantee that my every attempt to attune with Ermansoul will be successful. Or that doing so will leave my consciousness intact. I am currently in the stage of training known as Satyavada Life. Many researchers in Sumeru have lost their minds while seeking to attune with Ermansoul during this stage. Sages have said that Ermansoul contains divine knowledge, 
And touching such knowledge without the proper preparations and abilities will only lead to one's mind caving in on itself. That's why we meditate alone. We need to ensure that our minds will be calm while minimizing the possibility of involving anyone else. Whoa. So knowledge from Ermansoul can be super dangerous. Don't you ever feel afraid of the risk, Capasia? Of course I do. Especially during nights that are pitch black with no moonlight and dead silent without even the sound of insects. However, I've been feeling better as of late. I don't get as scared anymore knowing that I have a little neighbor living nearby. I believe that being able to see them is a sort of blessing from the Dendro Archon. <laughs> but what's strangest of all is that they're clearly an envoy of the God of Wisdom herself. And they have the curious power to make people dream. What's so strange about that? It doesn't sound so out of place for a divine being, does it? Well, it's strange because nearly nobody in Sumeru can ever dream. Ah, huh. is that true? Yes, well, to an extent. Only children can dream in Sumeru. Adults, however, never do. The sages say that wisdom implies rationality, but that which occurs in dreams is often neither rational nor logical. Yes, if one struggles with anxieties, those emotions could influence their dreams. The fact that the people of Sumeru do not have dreams is seen as a blessing by the sages. They believe that Greater Lord Ruka Devata, the God of Wisdom, is keeping us away from the foolish delusions you encounter in your sleep. I was born into a family of scholars in Sumeru City. Ever since I was a child, my parents would always tell me that I'll know I've grown up once I stop dreaming. I studied hard, enrolled as a student in the academia, and went on to become a researcher. <sighs> sure enough, I never dreamed again. But then, on the day I scared the little Aranara, I suddenly saw a dream again. It was incredible. Though I don't exactly remember what I saw, I clearly recall the feeling. I suddenly felt like I was a child again. Back then, I was foolish and ignorant as any youth would be, but I was free of fear. Maybe dreaming isn't as bad as we've made it out to be. <clears throat> uh, just be sure not to speak of this if you travel to Sumeru City. They'll look at you as if you've lost your mind. So, do you have any thoughts about the things she saw when she connected with Ermansoul? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any answers as of now. All I can say is that what you saw is a memory contained within Ermansoul itself. Hmm... World, forget me. What could that possibly mean? Uh, if only I could ascend past Satyavada life and begin Paripurna life, I might have some more answers for you. Uh, if you two are ever in the area again, please be sure to come and see me. There's no need to be thanking me. You two are my saviors. Besides, I'm already looking forward to tasting some more of your cooking. <laughs> now that we know Hapasia is alright and had the chance to ask her some questions, Paimon thinks it's about time to head back to Gundarvaville. Heading out, I see? If there's anything else you'd ever like to ask about, you know where to find me. I've heard local children here in the rainforest speaking of fairy-like creatures. But I'm from Sumeru City, and have never heard of such things when I was a child. Perhaps this is because I had a very strict upbringing. My parents would seldom allow me to play with other children. I doubt they'd ever believe me if I told them about my little neighbor out here. And speaking of my little neighbor, I think they can somehow sense when Tainari is coming to visit me. I've noticed on several occasions that as they're playing under the trees, they'll suddenly tense up and scamper away for no apparent reason. Shortly after they do this, Tainari always shows up here. Hmm, perhaps I should ask Tainari about this the next time I see him. Heading out, I see? 
If there's anything else you'd ever like to ask about, you know where to find me. Sumeru researchers use Spirit Borneal to assist them in connecting with Ermisol to extract knowledge from it. Though the process can be risky, we believe that the knowledge gained is worth it. Unfortunately, I cannot help you understand your dream. At least not yet. I'm still learning how to attune to the depths of Ermensoul myself. I hope that I'll be able to ascend past Satyavada life and gain deeper insights. Heading out, I see? If there's anything else you'd ever like to ask about, you know where to find me. Even though that little neighbor of mine was able to induce a state of dreaming, I doubt they were able to control the actual contents of the dream. The end of your dream seemed quite terrifying. Perhaps there's something that's troubling you deep inside? Not to worry, though. I'm sure you'll be able to handle whatever comes your way in the real world. As someone from Sumeru who cannot dream, I needn't ever worry about nightmares. But lately, I've started to feel that I'm somehow missing something without dreams. <laughs> it's a little hard to explain. Heading out, I see? If there's anything else you'd ever like to ask about, you know where to find me. Take care. Do remember to come visit any time you're in the area. I would be happy to chat with you. Think about it, Tainari. Refusing to join is tantamount to burying your head in the sand. I understand that you're a forest watcher and that it's your duty to combat the effects of withering zones. But isn't it evident that such work is not a lasting solution to the problem? As Sage Kajay clearly stated, your presence and guidance in Sumeru City is pivotal in finding a cure for Ermansul. How could you possibly refuse? Keep your emotions in check, Gulam. Let's at least listen to Tainari's reason for declining. We're here to invite him to the Academia, not to cause a scene. Sage Kaje, I am truly honored that you came here in person, but I'm afraid I must still decline your invitation. I am merely a forest watcher. How could the great minds of the Haravitat have any need of someone like me? <laughs> well, it turns out that your refusal letter had some implications on your master's reputation. He is a renowned sage of the Immorta, after all. So now I've come here in his stead. I see. Hmm. Well, I figured that given his temper, he would come here and berate me personally. Tainari, your master is an integral part of this effort. And now he requires your assistance. And what exactly does my master need of me, Sage Kaje? You'll know, once you've arrived in Sumero City, that is. And uh, how long will I be required to stay? Uh, there's no definite answer as of now. Do you mean to tell me that Despite coming all the way here to Gandarvaville, you still can't answer the questions I laid out in the letter to my master. If that's the case, then I'm afraid I cannot give you a definite answer either. Tainari, but you... Ah, uh, so be it. Come, Gulam, we're leaving. about it's nothing some people from the academia wanted me to go to sumeru city to assist them with a the project but i had to refuse on account of all my responsibilities here but all that can wait how did things go with hapasia it was quite the eventful trip but the main thing is that she's safe and sound she answered a bunch of questions for us too very good now that the traveler has made a full recovery there shouldn't be any reason for you to tarry here longer. I assume you will be heading to Sumeru City, correct? That's right! We want to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali and ask her for advice. Um, do you have any idea on how we can find her? Sorry, I'm afraid I don't have any advice for you there. Well, do you at least know anyone we can try asking in Sumeru?
Meru City? Hmm, let me think. My trips to Sumeru City have been fairly short, and uh, most of my acquaintances are researchers. Oh, how about this? I'll write you a letter of introduction that you can give to a researcher I know. He's from the Amor to Darshan and is adept at gathering information. Asking him might prove worthwhile. Also, when you enter Sumeru City, you'll probably end up receiving something like this item here. I'm not sure if it will ever come in handy for you, but maybe you can give it a try. Oh? What is it? It's called an Akasha Terminal. It's a tool produced by the Academia that utilizes the legacy of Greater Lord Ruka Devada. Some say that this item is the very basis of Sumeru's reputation as the City of Wisdom. Needless to say, this device and its usage fall under the Academia's expertise, so I'll leave it to them to show you how to use it. Next up, Sumeru City! Uh, oh, but wait, before that... That's right! Tainari, we have something important to say to Kale before we leave. Is she doing better now? Yes, she's doing much better. After being confined to her bed all this time, I thought a little walk would do her some good. Last I saw her, she was taking the path towards the North Crossing. She knew you two would be leaving soon, so she must have wanted to see you off. Thanks, Tainari. All right, let's go! Farewell, and good luck to you both. Kale is waiting at the northmost crossing of Gandharvaville. You should be able to find her there. It seems there's a major project underway at the Academia, and my master has also joined the effort. But I can't afford to leave Gandharvaville now. Things are not going well here in the rainforest, and Kale needs someone to watch over her. Eh, besides, I never was one for all the pomp and circumstance of life at the Academia. Given that my master hasn't come to give me an earful personally, it seems that my presence is not as sorely needed as they make it out to be. In fact, the letter he sent me was uncharacteristically polite. Kale is waiting at the northmost crossing of Gandharvaville. You should be... Don't you worry about Kale. I'll look after her. I'll find a way to understand the relationship between the withering and her disease. Kale is waiting at the northmost crossing of Gandharvaville. Farewell. You two. I, uh... Well, uh... <sighs> Never mind. I guess I should just wish you two a safe and successful journey. Thanks for waiting here just to see us off, Kale. We're headed to Sumeru City. Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. My condition won't be getting in the way of my duties. I want to be a forest ranger after all. It's up to me and the others to protect the rainforest here. And, uh, well, uh, I'm sorry. I should have told you both about my condition when we first met. I just wanted you two to treat me as a normal friend, not some girl that needs your sympathy. But I guess now I understand that the most important thing is for friends to be genuine with one another. There's no need to apologize, Kale. We should be thanking you for trusting us enough to be your friends and sharing your past with us. We're probably still gonna worry about your condition, but that's because we're friends and we care about you! Thank you. That means a lot. Uh, before you leave, I have something for you. Oh? What is it? It's my recipe for pita pockets. I told you that I'd give you a copy, remember? My handwriting is a little, uh, messy, so please don't laugh. Thanks, Kale. Now we can eat those scrumptious little pitas whenever and wherever we like. I hope that whenever you eat them, you'll both remember your time here in Gandharvaville. Well then.
then, I, Trainee Forest Ranger Kale, bid you both farewell. Please visit Gundarverville again. The Rangers will always be ready to assist you here. I hope you have a safe trip to Sumeru City and get to meet the Dendro Archon there. <laughs> Kinda hard to believe the Master Tainari can cook, isn't it? His culinary techniques are very polished, but his taste is a little... Uh... Unusual? It's not really his fault, though. He just has a sensitive tongue and nose, so he prefers much lighter flavors. The last time I went a little too heavy on the spices for my pita pockets, Master started having a sneezing fit. Of course, I never heard the end of it after that. <laughs> I hope you have a safe trip to Sumeru City and get to meet the Dendro Ark. I'm much better now. I'll be back on patrol again starting tomorrow. Even though I'm not quite ready to help Master clear the withering zones yet, there are still plenty of other tasks for me to handle. Oh, and Traveler, if you ever see Amber again during your travels, please don't mention my illness to her, okay? Amber knows about my case of Elazar and what's happened in my past, but I haven't told her about my condition getting worse. I guess I just don't want her to worry about me. If the need arises, I'll tell her about it myself. All right, we understand, Kale. I hope you have a safe trip to Sumeru City and get to... See you later! Be sure to come back often! Even though Master didn't admit it, I'm sure he wants to see you again. Sumeru City! Ah, we finally made it! Oh, did you see that? When those people entered the city, something on their heads lit up. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. But no need to worry. That won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved Greater Lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy, a treasure trove of collected knowledge. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha Terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Ormos. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leash. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Says this little doodad lets you access knowledge. Maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. Ahem. May the mighty god bless us with their voice of wisdom. <sighs> Whoa. Just now, something clicked, and Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing. Seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know, and BAM! You get it! Oh, that'll come in real handy! Exactly. That is the power of the Akasha. And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City. May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide.
Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm. Seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm. Uh, huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. Um. Hmm. The Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. Oh, smart idea. But what are you going to ask it? Hmm. You too? Well, glad it's not just Paimon. Paimon's getting all teary-eyed all of a sudden. It feels like the people of Sumeru really miss their Archon. Huh. Could it be because we're outlanders and we've only just arrived in Sumeru? You know, maybe we're not qualified to receive answer to this sort of question or something. <sighs> well, seems no matter which way we try, we can't find anything that'll lead us to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. He's from Sumeru and even has a position in the academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. Let's see. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Look. Hello, are you Rohawi? Yes, that's me. Can I help you? Great. You see, Tainari sent us here and... What? Tainari? I... Please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and maybe the data didn't... Here! This is a letter from Tainari! Oh, let me see... Ah! Ooh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. So, you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. So, what is it you two would like to know? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Sorostana or made a public appearance. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. Aw, but then what can we do? 
<laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. And besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha and things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages, come find me. Hey, come on. This is a survival skill at the academia. Oh, Paimon's expectations were pretty low, but this is so low, it's like digging holes in the dirt. So what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here. Huh? Like who? Oh, you're right. The Adventurer's Guild has its own intel network! Let's hurry and find her! Uh, been handed all the Anything tests. else you'd like to ask about? Sage is the highest rank for an academia researcher. Since the institution's founding, each of the six great sages represent the finest mind and leader of their respective darshan. One Grand Sage is chosen from among the six sages to serve as the head of the Academia. The current one is Sage Azar of the Ratawahist Darshan. Since ancient times, the sages have contributed immensely to Sumeru. The widespread usage of the Akasha is thanks to their hard work. Anything else you'd like to ask about? <laughs> I just knew you'd be curious about that. Although the six Darshans conduct research in different disciplines, their sages frequently interact with one another when managing academia affairs. In the Immorta, our leader is Sage Nafis. His temper is legendary. We researchers are terrified of him, and even the Grand Sage gives him some leeway. He hasn't shown his face lately, though. Rumor has it that he's currently involved with some major project. Thankfully, he's been so busy that I was able to publish a paper. Anything else you'd like to ask about? See ya. Take a page out of my book and learn to look on the bright side of things. Watch out for pickpockets. Bet you can't keep up with me! Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurer's Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Core of 30? What a weird name. Supposedly, 
They are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. Asphant, an advisor with the Corps of 30, maintains good relations with the Adventurer's Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of 30's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru.